Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. It sounds like uh, the, the promised wind and rain and thunder has arrived. Uh, so be it. We, uh, it's good to, to be here as we worship our Lord, but I do have a, an announcement. Uh, we emailed back and forth yesterday afternoon with the, the church council. And at least the next two weeks, there'll be no one meeting in the sanctuary. It'll be live stream only. There's really good information that we're going to be restricted to that anyway by Thursday. Uh, our county is on the very edge of turning purple. And the purple says you only travel for things you absolutely need. So to, to protect one another, we'll, we'll, there'll be a few of us here, no more than 10. Uh, for at least two weeks. So just to let you know, the FM will still be working, the live streaming, uh, the recording, uh, all of that will still be available so you'll be able to see it live. And uh, But we wanna, wanna be prudent in all of this. Our, uh, our focus today, or one of the focuses on our, our stewardship campaign and, and uh, when it comes time to make commitments, I'll give you some instructions there, but uh, it just so happened that out of our mission, one of our core values comes up today, which is give. So would you join me in uh, reading in unison the core value of give? We thank God for all things and willingly give back to God in gratitude. With our generosity of prayers, presents, gifts, service, and talents, God changes not only the lives of others, but our lives as well. We give thanks. So, how many uh, how many veterans do we have in the building today? If you'd stand up, I'd really appreciate it. I know you don't like to do that. Thank you all for your service. I, I give thanks every year for what Melba does up here to remind us of all the different branches of the service. And, and we need to pray not only for you as veterans, but those that are deployed now and those that are serving. And we give thanks. So I'd like to say a prayer to, to ask God to bless each of you and all the other veterans in our congregation and around us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all those that answered the call to serve you through the military. Thank you for each and every one of these veterans and the sacrifices they made. Uh, for us that we might be free. We also pray for those that are active duty in, in all the different branches that you would watch over them. And, and Lord, we pray for peace that none of our active duty people would need to die. Yet, Lord, we know that evil rules. And so we give thanks for those who are willing to protect us. We ask for your great blessing upon them in the name of Jesus, amen.
Please join with me in our call to worship. Come, share the joy of the Lord. Praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much. So as in many other things, our, our normal is not normal this year. So we have Operation Christmas Child boxes setting up here that, uh, and we want to dedicate them. There's, uh, we have several, I, I think someone said there's a couple hundred showing up this afternoon. Uh, so we, even though we're shutting down most of what we do, Operation Christmas Child gathering still has to happen. So. Uh, if, if you have time this week to help sign up and take care of those pieces, uh, that would really be appreciated. So here is a, a, a symbol of our love for others throughout the world. A symbol of how we will connect with another person to show them God's love. A symbol of of serving, not for our own sakes, but for the sake of others. And we give thanks as we give these gifts to God and to the people who will receive them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the Operation Christmas Child Boxes that have been filled. We pray that you are glorified through them. We pray that the seeds are planted through, through these boxes in people's hearts and the children's hearts that they would, would look for you. And so we bless these boxes now. We ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that they would be transformative in a child's life. And Lord, we thank you. We give you thanks for not only the boxes that are set in here, but all the boxes that will come in this week. And Lord, if if you would like for us to fill even more of them as individuals prompt us now that we would be faithful. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks as we set these aside for your ministry and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. the 
glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to men made holy, let us do to men made free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. As we come to our prayer time, uh, I ask that you read through all the prayer concerns this morning. And as I, as I am here at this moment, I forgot to share that it's not just live streaming, but FM will also be available for anybody who just feels a connection by being around the church uh, next week. We just need to pray uh, beyond any, anything we have prayed for the, the COVID and the virus and the healthcare workers, the frontline people. So please uh, keep each and every one, and, and all the leaders, the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our, our community, the leaders of our county, everybody that has uh, those, the decisions and the weight of decisions upon them right now. And we give thanks for we know that God is with us. So let us take this time and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many ways that you demonstrate your love for each of us and how you want to use us to show that love to others who we connect with in our lives. Lord, empower us through your Holy Spirit that our witness would be such that lives would be changed. And Lord, we know that the, the hope for our nation comes with one after another person becomes saved in Jesus Christ. And our thoughts and our attitudes are, are more like you than the world. So teach us and, and guide us. And we do pray for all those that are listed on our prayer uh, list this morning and ask you to minister to them. We pray for those that aren't on the list that have great need as well. Lord, as you are with us, we ask that you continue to guide us as individuals and as a congregation in bringing you glory as we minister in and around our community. Use us for your service. Praise you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing with you. Then if anyone says to you, Behold, 
here's the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. For false Christ, false prophets will rise, and will show great signs and wonder, so as as to mislead if so as mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told told you in advance. If therefore there they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go forth. Or behold, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east, and the flashes even in the west, so shall it come the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Thank you, man. As we look at this scripture and then look at the sermon title, you're going to probably ask, how did he ever get that out of that? Uh, here's, here's the purpose for this, this gospel reading. It is to remind us all that the greatest gift we have received is Jesus Christ. And are we being faithful with that gift? Now, Jesus is going to return one day. Some would hope it'd be sooner than later. I, I personally believe that it's going to be later than sooner and that things aren't even bad yet. We might see the, the front end of, of things getting bad, but I think really believe it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse to the point that each and every one of us will be challenged as to whether we truly believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior or not. We will be challenged through persecution of all kinds. It will be a worldwide impact as far as struggling with, am I going to follow Jesus or if I'm going to follow the world? And so the last verse here is, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. One day, the people that are living will see Jesus return. Wouldn't it be great to be a part of that group? But then think of it. What's been described before this. To see Jesus return in that moment. Will also be. Will be required to. Go through all the suffering that takes place before he can return. So how then do we stay faithful. To all of God's gifts. The first being the giving of Jesus Christ to us. I'd like to look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. And this is what is written. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Our glory and power to Him forever and ever. So one of the ways that we stay faithful in using what God has gifted us, what God has entrusted to us, is through the way we're willing to serve, knowing that God, through His spiritual gifts, has provided all the resources we really need to do that service. Now, this also tells us that we can choose not to use those gifts. So I encourage us not only to, to seek God and say, okay, God, what's my gift? Uh, and if you aren't sure, that's, that's okay. Try it. God will make it very clear very quickly whether it's your gift or not. But then I always had this, this caveat. 
when you're living out of a gift of God, from the world's perspective, there may be turmoil. But in our spirit, we'll have peace because we know we are answering God's call on our lives to be with people, to connect with them, to serve them in such a way that they will experience God's love through us. So if you have a spiritual gift, use it. Use it for God's glory and honor. And then in Malachi, this is a verse that often comes up when, with stewardship campaigns and uh, for our, uh, our connection this morning. Malachi 3, 8 through 10. Should people cheat God? Now, we probably would remember a story in, in, in Acts where a couple decided to cheat God and when the first one finally confessed, uh, his life was forfeited and then his wife as well. So should people cheat God? And God is saying, yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test, God says. Now, this was a time, this is for the nation of Israel. There's debates whether this is uh, really applicable in, in a New Testament world, in a post-resurrection uh, world. But we know Jesus said that, you know, I didn't come to change what came before. I came to add to it. I came to fulfill it. So this was a time where people were, uh, were sharing some of their, their, their offering. Now, offerings in, the, in that day wasn't necessarily all money. They were expected to give 10% of their grain, 10% of everything to God. And God says, you know, you've been cheating me. And this is how that, that worked. The, to the best information we have is that they were very, people were very careful to fulfill the letter of the law, but it wasn't necessarily the best that they could give. And some was, would not even share the total amount. They brought some in and hoped that people didn't notice that it was not as much as was required. If when, what they brought often was second condition, it wasn't best. And God says, you're cheating. You're not giving back what I ask of you. So we ask ourselves, are we willing to be used by God to pour out a blessing so that God will pour out a blessing for, on us that there's not even room for it all? And then he says, try it. It's almost like, I dare you. I dare you to try and see what I will do for you. Then, finally, these thoughts. In Acts, we find that uh, people, to take care of one another, would sell their resources so that others within the body of Christ would have their needs met. That's in Acts 2.45. So the principle in the New Testament is to give voluntarily to support the needs of others, to support Christian workers, and expand Christian outreach, our service, our connection, our love of God, that which we share, to serve, to love, to connect, to give, for God's glory. In the New Testament, no specific amount is ever commanded and no percentage is suggested, while a tithe or tenth of one's finances may be a good standard for use for Christian giving, and I believe that is the starting point. It's not just a good standard, it's where we start and go from there. 
It is clear that the early church did not focus on a specific amount, but rather on meeting needs, whatever it took. So just to, to uh, step on all of our toes at once, you know, what, what we're being taught here is that in the early church, people gave much more because they gave what they had for those that had need. So no wonder there's no 10% listed in the New Testament because God expects us to give voluntarily of what He has entrusted to us without setting a minimum and, and never setting a maximum. Sometimes we look at the tithe as a maximum. But no, God wants to use us for His glory and honor to transform our world, and we know more than anything else that means taking everything we have, our spiritual gifts, our, our talents, our finances, our energy, our gifts, and we voluntarily give them all to God to take care of the needs of each other. So let us not forget that when we talk about the tithe, that it's a starting point. It's not the ending point. See what the Pharisees were doing in Jesus' day is they were taking the law and living it out and saying, look at me, I've done the minimum. And Jesus said, you're doing the minimum and you don't even really love me. You don't love God. You're just doing what you think is right so you think God loves you, and God does, but you really aren't living faithfully because you aren't taking what God has given you and using it for His glory. You're just trying to show off to everybody around you. So what about each of us? Are we willing to take and give to God what God purposes in our hearts, our time, our talents, our service, our witness, our faithfulness, all of our gifts, so that God will be glorified and lives will be changed in the power of the Spirit. Amen. I'd like for you, if you, you brought your commitment cards, that's great. If you've already filled them out, that's, that's okay. But I would ask that we spend a, a, just a few moments in silent prayer and check one more time with God and say, is this what you want me to do in this coming year? Have I heard you correctly? And when you feel that you're, you're at peace with that and, and you know that you've prayed over it and this is what God wants you to do, then I ask you to come and, and lay your, your commitment cards on the two sides on the, on the rail for communion. So let us be in a, a short moment of prayer and ask God. And then uh, as we move through this time of bringing our gifts uh, forward, uh, Olga's going to play in the back. Let's
Dear Heavenly Father, we set apart each of these commitments to you, that you would be honored. Lord, we thank you. We, we thank you for those that aren't with us this morning and those that are in their, their, their cars listening. Lord, as, as each one sends their commitment, we will know that we are honoring you as you honor our faithfulness. Use us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus' name. 